Good evening, my friends. Anthony Fontana here, Alive After Five. Just wanted to touch base with you. It's Monday, post-Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, the day was busy. I hope everyone had a great day yesterday. I hope you enjoyed the game or didn't. I don't know. Uh, we had fun. It wasn't, it wasn't what I expected it to be, but we were together and we had a blast. So that makes it fun because we're together enjoying it, MJ and I. So we're coming at you tonight from our home here. This is the kitchen. Uh, we're working on different rooms right now. So here's where I'm at right now. Look, let's talk about something real quick. If, if, uh, you're guilty. Of, we're all guilty of this. If you're looking through a pair of glasses that only looks in the past, then guess what's going to happen? You're not going to have the success that you want to have in life. We all do this. This is We're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. So you have two pairs of glasses. You have a pair of glasses that you put on that looks backwards in time. And you have another pair of glasses that you could easily put on that looks forward into the future. What holds us back from doing? What holds us back from starting that business, quitting that job and going into a different direction, moving into another state, starting a new relationship because you had an old relationship that sucked and you're, you're, that's what you're thinking about, but you can't make a move in a new relationship or make a move into a new business because you're afraid, you're stuck. What causes that? It's our thoughts. Our thoughts trick us every single day. They trick us into believing a certain thing is happening and exists when it's not the truth. Let's use an example. You get hit from behind. You're sitting at a light and someone hits you from behind. Now you have several different ways you can react. You can react in fear and say, oh my God, you know, he's going to, that guy, maybe he doesn't have any insurance. Maybe he's an uninsured motorist. Maybe he's going to try to cheat me. My insurance rates are going to go up. And you start shaking in fear. Or you can get angry, like a lot of people do. That's jackass, man. He just hit me in the back. I'm going to go slap his face in. He's probably damaged my car. He better have insurance because if he doesn't, I'm going to knock him out. That's a different reaction. Or you can have a, a courageous reaction. Wow, this stuff happens. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm going to get out and just have a conversation with the guy. And he probably has insurance. I know it's going to be okay. Maybe I have some damage. Maybe I don't, I don't know. Or the fourth way you can do it is you have a very selfless reaction. Maybe a reaction based on love, love-based, where you, you just know you're not going to have any reaction. You're going to get out. You're going to figure it out. You know it's going to be okay. And you're going to go about your day. Well, guess what? That happened to MJ and I. Christmas Day, we're on the way to our cousins. We weren't far from our house. We weren't far from their house. It's only a few miles away. We were at a traffic light just sitting there uh, in my BMW. All of a sudden, crush, we get hit from behind. Now, it wasn't a hard hit, but it was enough of a hit to move a 6,000 pound car a few inches forward. I wanted to make sure MJ was okay because of her back and neck issues on occasion. She has issues, and I'll make sure she was okay. I looked at her real quick. It was a little uncomfortable, but I said, you know what? I'm going to take care of this. I had no reaction, and she's a witness to this. If she comes on this call, she'll tell you. I got out of the car in the suit, probably just like this, walked out. I, I looked at the back of my car, and I could see that there was a little damage on my the, the hood. It's, a, it's an X5, so it's an SUV. But I also noticed a piece of round plastic on the floor in front of this kid's car I see a, an older woman sitting next to him and a young kid with a giant head of hair like that. I said, oh man, this kid is going to be, he's like, he was shaking. I, I could see he's white in the car. I pick up the piece of plastic because it was his light that fell off. He had, a, he had a bunch of damage. He gets out of the car, shaking like a leaf. I said, look, dude, I don't know what you want to do here, but I'm going to tell you right now, I have, you know, minimal damage. I'm okay. You have just this piece of plastic fell off. You're going to be fine. Shove it back on. Your, your, your light bulb's got a scratch on it. You're good to go. He says, sir, I am so sorry. He was so apologetic and so nervous. His mom's in the car, like flipping out. Probably the first time the kid's driving in the car. And on the way to Christmas dinner with some family, he was freaking out. This took less than 60 seconds. I stuck my hand out. I shook kids he took my hand both his hands he says what, what what do i need to do? Like, i don't need to do anything you want to involve insurance or not we can we can't we, i don't care i said but i don't think we need to i don't think i need anything from you you hit me you're automatically at fault i was at a traffic light i don't see you texting you're not holding your phone you got your mom in the car right he said you know i do oh my god she's freaking out i'm like let's just get out of here let's go you go to your dinner i'm going to mine we're good he's oh my god thank you so much i guarantee it I was an angel to that guy, that kid, probably 18-year-old kid that day. The damage on our car was so minimal, it wouldn't have been an insurance claim. It would have been a joke. Why bother? I can pop 
pop it out with a, uh, with a plunger. No big deal. My reaction was different. Back in the day, I might have gotten a little excited and upset about it, but not anymore. I, I stopped doing that many, many years ago. So same situation. What's the difference? It was thoughts that affected the result. The past vision came into play, is brought forward in an instant, because a lot of you, if that happened to, would have got out and out of that car and gotten all excited because in the past, maybe you got beaten for insurance. Maybe the guy wasn't an insured motorist. Maybe he took off like a bat out of hell. Okay? I, it's not the first time I've been hit where someone took off. This guy didn't take off, and he stayed. And he was nervous, and he was afraid, and I made his whole day. It was a young kid. I probably would have affected his license, his mom's insurance, and God knows what. What, for a couple of hundred dollars that we don't need and we wouldn't have gotten anyway? It would have been a waste of time. And who benefits? The insurance companies. It was okay. No hurt, no harm, no foul. But that future anxiety pops into play when you look back with a pair of glasses that are looking in the past. They just do. You end up with paralysis. You end up with a standstillitis. You don't move. You, don't, you can't shake the feeling that something's going to happen. You have a thought to do something positive and you get slammed down because you're thinking about what's going to happen even though it might not happen, but you're thinking about the past. Your mind goes back. And then we wonder why we're, we, we stand still. We don't, we don't go anywhere. We don't have any results because we don't do anything because we're so reactive to everything because our past rules. Our past is programming. It's an operating system that just just shows up and says, look what happened in the past. Here's how you have to react now. And it just does. You do it in an instant. It literally takes less than a thousandth of a second for all those emotions to come forward and to give you this fight or flight reaction. It's automatic. Well, you're looking through the prism of the past. You're looking through a pair of glasses that doesn't exist. The past does not exist. It's already happened. It's not here anymore, for Pete's sake. It's just not here. The damn thing is over. The event that happened in 1978 no longer exists. It's gone. Why are you thinking about it? Well, that's just the way the body reacts. And here's the key. I've done this. I'm still doing it. It's a process. We cannot not do this. What we can do is understand the process and change how we react and flip the switch so we're more positive and more, more, less reactive to a, an event that's going on or a thought that's happening. You have to practice this. The past is dead, folks. It does not exist. Hey, Joe, what's going on, brother? Will Sam, what's happening? Irene, it doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. What if you could do this? What if you could reset your hard drive and clean it with a, with a clean slate where you wipe out all the old nonsense that's in there? You do it on a hard drive or on a computer. You reprogram it from day one, which is today. Well, you have two pairs of glasses in the case. You have one that you always have on that looks in the past, and you have one that you could put on that looks toward a clean future, a bright future, a fresh future, right? You get to choose. And sometimes I find myself putting on a rear, uh, a rear looking pair of glasses and I recognize it in an instant. I'm like, that's not the thought I want to have. That's not conducive to what I want. That's not where I'd like to be in the past. I want to be in the future. I want to know where I'm going. And I know where I'm going. So I take the glasses off, put them back in the case and put on the new ones. Now you can't break and throw out the old glasses. There's too much in here to do that. But you can recognize the activity and change how you're reacting to it. So the past is dead. Smash the reverse vision glasses in your mind. Put on the new ones. So I'm going to close with that. Stop looking behind you. Start looking forward. Understand that you're perfect exactly the way you are and that you can do anything that you want to do. Anything is anything you want is yours. But you have to remember that you have this device called a brain that will automatically throw a pair of real looking glasses on you. You need to recognize it when it happens, take those suckers off, put them back in the case where they belong, and then put on the new fresh ones that look forward. So that's it for tonight. Have a great night, guys. I have to do a little ad for, uh, um, uh, for one of our businesses. So I'm gonna jump off and then I'm gonna do that ad and put that out uh, into a group that I'm in. But I love you guys. Thank you for coming on board. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to wave at a couple of you. Joe, who, who's on here? Oh my gosh, so many of you. And Jimmy, what's going on? Philip, my brother, what's going on? Ronald, my old high school friend, Loretta. Wow, holy cow, there's a lot of you on here. 
What's going on? Man, I'm amazed. What are you guys doing tonight watching me? Get off this thing. Go hang out with your girlfriend or your wife or your husband or your boyfriend. I'll see you guys later. Love you. Bye.